present Highly Strung Hannah by Robert Chandler. This week, if you were an animal, what would you be? I've called this meeting because all heads of department were told by Sir Charles to read this statement at this time on this day right across the company. Oh no! Receivership? Hannah, we are not in receivership. Mind you, this is bad news. For you, anyway. The sack? No. Just let me read the statement without shrieking, fainting or doing your weeble impressions, OK? OK. I'll slap her. Karen! Joke. It has been decided that all personnel at all levels below board level will be required to undertake some psychometric tests. <sighs> Anna, please. Sorry. <clears throat> to enable the board to evaluate their personalities, coping strategies, intelligence and suitability for their positions, the test will be carried out by social scientists from the University of Weybridge, headed by Dr. Peter Patterson. The test will begin this week and all results will be back with the board in time for our meeting next week. We have to undertake this study in order to satisfy our shareholders that should the company's fortunes ever change for the worst, we would have a simple way of deciding how any restructuring would be carried out. Please do not worry about the tests. They are not that bad. Sir Charles. Can I sweet now? Everyone, cover your ears. Oh! Gordon Bennett, some opalescence and you could do wonders with that voice of yours. Psychometric tests? Psycho. Anything with psycho in it and that's it. I'm stuffed. Just give me my P45 now, Tony, while I'm still sane. It's all right, Hannah. You can fake the answers. Make out that you're not mental. You saying I'm mental? Well, no, just the highly strong. I know about these psychometric tests. They ask you all these stupid questions and it doesn't matter how you answer them because if they don't like you, you're out anyway. I'm sure they're all scientific. You can get books on how to do them. Well, I have to start reading then, fast. Look, I'm not worried, so don't you worry. I think Charles is really mean. He knows what I'm like. Well, he doesn't, does he? You're always so keen to look in control whenever he comes in. He thinks you're a bit servile, but... He hasn't got you down as unstable. Servile? Yes, Sir Charles. No, Sir Charles. Oh, good morning, Sir Charles. Look who's talking. Oh, no, no. I grovel. You simper. Simper? Hmm. Well, thank you very much. At least I actually do some work. The higher up in management you go, the less work you do and the more money you get. You have to aspire to something. I did your job once and worked my way up. You could too. Yes. Well, after these psychometric tests, I won't even have my job. Look, we won't even use the results unless the company has to make redundancies, and we're fine at the moment. Oh, great. So I'm turkey shoot, then? No, no. Relax, Anna. Oh, sorry, you, you hate people telling you to relax, don't you? Yes. How can I relax? Two of the scariest words in the world. Psychometric and tests. In the same sentence. You'd better call an ambulance now. You'll be fine. Ask Tim. He's got a PhD or whatever. His labs are even attached to the same university, aren't they? Maybe he knows Dr. Patterson. Good point. I'll ask. <laughs> You've been going on and on about these tests all night, darling. Give it a rest. But they stress me out. I offered to talk to Dr. Patterson to go easy on you, and you said no. Yes, because he mustn't know how stressed I am about the tests. Well, I can go through the books you bought with you, but that's the best I can do. Anyway, psychometric tests aren't really my field. Well, what if I come out badly, then? Well, look, as I said, try them and see. They might not be that bad. We'll go through the books together tomorrow anyway. Often the answers aren't what they're testing, but your reaction to doing the tests. So I think some stress management would be a better idea. Oh, be sensible, Tim. I only have a week. Oh yes, good point. What's that supposed to mean? 
Well, nothing. You implied you wouldn't have enough time. You don't have to agree. Well, try and get some sleep. Everyone knows that lack of sleep makes a mental state worse. In everyone. Well, I don't know how I'll sleep. Even Mr Tiddles didn't know. I asked him. Hmm. Well, maybe psychometric tests are beyond a bear's realm of experience. Yes, maybe. Sorry, Mr Tiddles. That's all right, Anna. Oh, dear God. Good night, darling. Say good night to Mr Tiddles. Good night, Mr Tiddles. Good night, Tim. Good night. Er, uh, haven't we forgotten something? I said good night to your bear. Kiss, kiss. Oh, yes. Please, no spider. Please, no spider. Morning, Han. Stop talking to yourself. He's here. <gasps> oh, no. He didn't hear me talking to myself, did he? No, he's in with Tony. Relax. Well, try to. Relax, relax. How can I? Oh, they're coming. Come on, Hannah. In control. Calm and in control. Stop talking to yourself. Sorry. Stop talking to yourself, Hannah. Morning. Oh. Oh, sorry. Did I start on you? Um, no. I mean, um, yes. But I'm not stressed or anything. Damn stupid, stupid. <laughs> so, um, you're from the university then? Yes. Hannah's husband works there too. Really? Hannah? Hannah? Hmm? What? Tim works at the university. Yes. He's head of one of the microbiology labs. He does stuff on mosquitoes and things. Oh, Tim Spencer. Yes. Amazing man. So calm considering... What? Considering what? How hard it is to secure funding for his work in the current research climate. Oh, right. Yes. Well, he's very eminent. Well, well. What a small world. Yes. How big would you say it was? Pardon? The world. Is this part of the test? No, no. Oh, right, well, um, really big. I think so too. Good. I'll be starting with Margaret this morning, then Michelle and then Karen, then you, then Tony. You're honoured getting me. There are 15 of us working across the company and I'm doing the customer satisfaction, legal and finance departments. I don't like doing one department entirely in one go. Why not? It's just protocol. Oh, right. OK, question one. If you were an animal, what animal would you be and why? Oh dear, well, Tony would be a sloth. Karen would be a squirrel. Why? She's always nibbling nuts. Hannah. It's OK. She and I had this banter. Anyway, I asked you what animal you would be and why. Oh, I don't know. If I have to look good under pressure, but without seem lazy, I guess a cat. Good. Why? Because they're... I don't know. Let's think. They sleep a lot. They lick their bottoms. They chase mice. They like catnip. And they're very manipulative. How so? Well... You know, they take over the house. They know their humans will do anything to make them happy. And they milk it. Yes, I can see why you'd be a cat. You're just like that. Uh, I don't lick my bottom. Chase mice or shag catnip. I meant the manipulative bit. Eh? Quite a good trait for career advancement, I would have thought. Oh, I see. I mean, you get away with everything you want because I love you and I know what you'd be like if you weren't happy. So you're like a cat and I'm like your owner. If I roll over, will you tickle my tummy? Yes. Well, maybe later when we've gone through the questions. Anyway, if Dr Patterson asked you to say why you wanted to be a cat, what would you say? I don't know. Does he know you're my wife? He does now. Karen told him. She didn't mean to. Right, well, try and behave like a normal person then, please. Am I embarrassment then? No, darling. I'm always talking about you. I have a copy of our wedding photo on my desk. And one of Josh. 
Sorry, it's just the stress the tests are making me more sensitive than usual. Ah. I might be a bit touchy this week. Sorry if I am. It's all right, darling. I'm used to you. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. I just mean, when you have your rough weeks, well, we always get by, don't we? Yes. Only because of who you are, though. I do appreciate you, you know. I'm so lucky to have you. Me too. Now, come on. I know you're trying to avoid answering the question. OK. I want to be a cat because cats are independent and savvy, because they balance their work and rest, keep themselves in trim with regular exercise and give and receive love. Perfect. And no mention of arse licking. No, that's Tony's department. <laughs> Morning, Hannah. Morning. It's D-Day today. Yes, thanks for reminding me. Oh, yes, you're stressing out, aren't you? A bit. Morning, Han. <gasps> for God's sake! Don't creak up on me like that. You're very jumpy this morning. I'm not jumpy. Boo! Ah! <laughs> that wasn't funny. Look, please try and stay calm today. I have to be calm today and you're not helping. Oh, you want to be calm, do you? Well, guess what? So do I. Morning, all. Oh, God. Um, um, hello. Um, um, yes, well, yes, I'm, I'm, yes. OK. Hannah, calm down. What's up, Doc? Do you take anything seriously, Tony? No, not really. Morning, Han. Oh, um, yes, morning, um, Miranda. Margaret. Oh, yes, sorry, I'm a bit, um, oh, all in a fluster this morning. What was that, Hannah? Nothing. I'm just telling Michelle that she shouldn't get a fluster, wasn't I? Oh, yes. Thanks for that advice, Hannah. I don't know what I'd do without your wise words. Excellent. Now, Karen, when you've had a coffee, I think we should test you, don't you? No. Humour. Very good. Excuse me. Oh, yes, just help yourself. Oh, my God. This test is going to be a nightmare. We're all going to do really badly and lose our jobs. It'll be fine. Why are you shaking, Karen? I'm not shaking. You won't psych me into shaking. Tim went through some with me last night. He said whatever the answer you gave him... Shut up! Karen? Hello. That was quick. You OK? Yes, just a touch of uh, Tourette's. Ah, right. Well, I'll ask Tony to clear out. Give me a minute. Thanks, Hannah. Now he's going to think I'm the highly strung one, when really I'm calm. Oh, sorry. I just need to talk about it. I'm so nervous. Yes, well, we're all catching your nerves, so can you stop, please? Talk to Mr Tiddles. I see he's poking out of your handbag. Oh, yes, for good luck. I couldn't have come in today without Mr Tiddles. Karen? Um, coming. Chucked out of my office for a silly test. The man can't even sit around and chill out without being evicted from his office. What is the world coming to? I don't know. Have you done the test yet? No, I don't care. So Charles and me, we're, we're like this. It'll be fine. I wish he couldn't keep coming up with these stupid ideas. Well, when you're sitting around in your penthouse suite all day with nothing to do, this is what happens. But you sit around in your office all day with nothing to do and you don't keep coming up with these stupid ideas. That's because I can't be bothered to think of any. And by the way, thanks for the compliment. I wish you didn't have those blinds behind the glass. I want to see what's going on. Peep through the keyhole. Oh, thanks, I will. It was a joke. Oh, yes. If he came out and found me peeping through the keyhole, what would he say? He'd have to look into that. Very good. It's the way you tell them. Oh, thank God that's over. Some of those questions were a nightmare. Hannah! You can't tell what he's thinking. He's like a slightly smiling blank page. God knows what he thinks of me. Hannah! I'm coming! It's like being at school, this is. Don't forget Mr Diddles. Most people carry a hand kit in their pocket. You have a bear, I see. Yes, this is Mr Tiddles. I see. D. 
Does he always come to work with you? No, only for tests. He went all through my A-levels and he's with me through uni. It's a comfort thing. Right now, Hannah, we're just going to get to know each other. Or rather, I'm going to get to know a little bit more about you. The, your thought process, your attitude. Oh, right, well, I think these tests are completely stupid and a waste of time. All they do is stress everybody out so we can do our jobs properly. Right. Well, the tests are meant to draw out your opinions, Hannah. Well, let's save time and, and just put everything on the table. I see you're an Oxford graduate. Hmm, very impressive. How do you know? Sir Charles told me. He liked you, you know. Does he? Yes, I shouldn't have said that. You're very disarming, Hannah. Oh, thank you. And disrobing. Go away from the keyhole! Dear me, my colleagues, I don't know. Quite. Now, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? I talked about this with my Tim last night. Ah, yes. I decided Tony was a sloth, Karen was a dog, and I was a cat. I see. And what's Michelle? A temp. What sort of animal? Is that an answer on your sheet? No, I'm just interested. OK. So that wraps its sails around anyone's trousers. A small dog? I suppose. Or maybe a possum. You seem to think your female colleagues are rather flirtatious. You said they were dogs. Oh, no. When I said I saw Karen as a dog, I didn't mean it in that way. I meant loyal, faithful and obedient. The perfect assistant manager, actually. Anyway, back to you. Why would you be a cat? Because all they have to do is get love, food, warmth and shelter to lie on people's laps, rub their legs and catch the odd mouse. Right. And they can lick their own bottoms. Indeed. Next question. What's your favourite colour and why? Oh, I was talking about that with my Tim last night too. I told Sir Charles to let us make up our own questions, but he said it would be too expensive. Blue, because it's deep and meaningful. Well, as you seem to have gone through the test, I suppose we'd better stop the interview. Great. You were going to ask me which shape I like best. Of a circle, a square and a diamond, weren't you? Um, yes. Anyway, we went through the questions for fun. I knew the test wasn't about answers anyway. He wanted to see how well I coped under pressure. The whole thing about the cost, test costing our jobs was a lie, wasn't it? Um, well, um, uh, yes, uh, but... Uh... All done on the cheap. Well, I can't really comment, obviously. Obviously? Well, I won't let on. It's about time someone put Tony, to, Tony through his paces. Well, um, thank you, Hannah. God, I'm good. Thank you, Hannah. Tony? Oh, I'm so good. Yes, that's what it says in that. Karen? You were quick. Oh, yes, I don't take long. Yes, it says that in the ladies, too. Karen, I won't tell you again. Sorry, couldn't resist that one. He knew who he was dealing with. I told him the tests were a complete waste of time, they made everyone stressed, and that I'd be going through the questions with Tim last night. Had you? Yes, that book I bought at lunchtime the other day. The test Sir Charles picked up is from the book. I thought he'd have let them make one up. But no, crib straight from the book. Well, I'll be blowed. It says that in the... Yeah, yeah, thank you. Anyway, Mr Tiddles think I do as well. So I actually feel quite calm. Weird. Yeah, while well, the rest of us are all wound up. Oh, sorry. Well, I told him all about you. I said I thought you were a dog. What? Reliable, faithful and obedient. You'd obviously stopped listening by then. Oh, right. Sorry, misunderstood you there. Well, when he's done with Tony, he let us have his findings. Oh dear. If I could have your attention. Thank you. You analyse those results quickly. 
Well, actually, the psychometric tests were just meaningless. The results have been analysed during the week. This was never about the answers you gave. It was to see how you coped under stress. The thought that a test could determine your job would reveal who the most easily stressed are, so the company can target its new stress management plans more constructively. Oh well, that's my goose cook then. Actually, Hannah, you've done very well. Your indifference showed you obviously realised what was going on, which shows real insight. Your ingenuity and preparation likewise shows you score highly on the attention focus continuum and excel in caution, orientation and lateral thinking. Can we have a translation for those of us who don't speak fluent bollocks? Hannah! Very good. I know you're only joking. You seem to be perfect management material and I will be recommending you to Sir Charles for when the next management vacancies come up. Oh! Did you hear that, Mr Tiddles? Oh, thank you. Thank you. You were saying about wrapping legs round people? I always knew I had it. It says that. Karen, I won't tell you again. Oh, thank you, Dr Paston. Oh, I love you. You're wonderful. That was thorough. Do you need help in getting your head pulled out? Tony, you're too lazy to worry about the tests. In fact, perfect senior management material. Karen, if I may say, you seem a little highly strung, but you still cope very well. Anyway, I'll talk to the rest of you in a few minutes. <laughs> Nature calls. I'm highly strung. Cheek. Who is this muffin? Dr Peter Patterson. They must have named a Peter principal after him. If he says Hannah's management material and has wonderful insight and I'm highly strong, he's a charlatan. Hey? He didn't see me tending to you when you stopped just short of incontinence pants in case you wet yourself during the tests. Oh, yes, well, don't think I didn't appreciate what you did for me because I do. And remember, if I get a promotion, you get a promotion too. Hmm. Well, when he tells us what the other's got, I'm off home to my Tim. Him going through those tests really made a difference. I'll show him how grateful I am. Shall we get the wheelchair ramp out then? Karen, really? I think we should celebrate the end of the tests. And you know what? Sir Charles won't act on them anyway. He obviously just... Oh my God, it's Sir Charles. He's coming, look. Oh yes, I'm so glad my underwear matches. What? Whoops. Morning, everyone. Morning, Sir Charles. Morning, Sir Charles. You've all done very well. Thank you, Sir Charles. Thank you, Sir Charles. Charles! Tony, how the devil are you? All the better for seeing you, sir. Splendid, splendid. (laughs) Of course you are. Morning, Sir Charles. Morning, Hannah. Who's this? Mr Tiddles. Ah, splendid, splendid. (laughs) I'm in a particularly good mood today. Oh, Lady Scarlet did the... I'll say, hey, Dr. Patterson. Sir Charles. Done the tests, then? Yes, and you'll have my full report next week as promised. Good show. I will be recommending Hannah for promotion as soon as possible. Ah, yes. Well, I've always kept an eye on Hannah, you know. Have you? Oh, yes. If only you had the background, I would have given you that board job. Alas, you didn't have. Well, something will come up. It always does when I'm around. Oh, you're not wrong. <clears throat> I'll be away then. Goodbye, Sir Charles. Bye, everybody. Bye. Right, come on then, layabout. Let me take you out to lunch and we'll play some golf, eh? Yes, sir, lovely. See you later then. Tomorrow? Probably. And how are you, Karen? The same. So you are. Excellent. Well done. Come, Tony. What's that supposed to mean? Well, that's my line. So, management material. Fast-tracking your way to promotion. That's my girl. I know. Well, Josh does his A-levels next year, and we'll have to be thinking about uni. More money will be good. Indeed. Who knows, maybe you'll be the new CEO one day. I hope so. 
There, Mr Tiddles. Mummy will be running the company one day. It's been a very exhausting week, but it's had a happy ending. Yes. So you'll just settle down to sleep tonight, won't you? Yes, darling. Night. You've been listening to Nanu Chumba as Hannah, Robert Chantler as Tim, Caroline Palmer as Karen, Jeff Buckingham as Tony, Mark Hover as Dr. Patterson, Sue Buckingham as Margaret, and Doug Neal as Sir Charles. Highly Strung Hannah was written and directed by Robert Chandler and was a free theatre company production. Mm-hmm.